Hey everybody, welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew, and I'm joined by Martin. Hi Matt, you, you right there? Yeah, I'm doing pretty damn good. It's although I'll tell you what. <sighs> December it's December twentieth. This it seems it feels like this year just started. This t- time is just going so fast, man. It's crazy. Oh, it's been long, but it has uh, gone by quite quick. I was saying the other day, I just can't believe bloody how quick it has gone. Yeah. Given all that we've had to put up with, but there you go. It has been a crappy year, but it's almost mm. over. Ten, 10, 11 more days. All right. So, Thank the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. So this is going to be a little bit different of an episode. Normally we would say, hey, what we've been doing on Linux this week, then we'd talk about some news. But this is the last episode of the year, last episode of Season 4, and we're going to do something a little bit different. So after the contact information, which I'll get into in just a second, uh, we're going to talk about five things we've done or noticed or been, you know, kind of paid attention to in Linux this year. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing for this episode. But first contact information if you want to get in contact with us you can do so at the linux cast on twitter i'm at mtwb martin is martin twit to you you can find all those links and all the links that i'm about to share with you in the show notes in the video description below uh you can subscribe to all of our podcast feeds and so on at the linuxcast.org you can find us uh or contact us via email at the linuxcast at gmail.com uh starting next year we will have our very own email uh you know, email address, so that will be changing. But for now, the Linuxcast at gmail.com. You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Linuxcast. And don't forget to subscribe to YouTube, to us on YouTube, where you'll find different videos of certain uh, varying qualities. I, I pissed a lot of people off by making uh, snide comments about Linux Mint, so that was pretty good. Um, oh, also... Uh, you can also, if you really want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. I, I created one of those things because that's apparently what people do now is create uh, Patreon pages for no apparent reason. So I did that. <laughs> um, yeah, and I watched uh, your, your Mint video. Well, I say watched. I turned it off, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, it's all right, man. I, I knew it was. I watched it three quarters, and I thought, "Oh, dissing Linux mint here, huh?" I knew it was <laughs> going to be triggering Arch for you, Martin. Get, just for you, man. <laughs> get back to Arch. Yeah, 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 yeah you Arch snob. <laughs> I'm so, yeah, I'm probably I'm looking down, that. looking down on the normos. Yeah, well, I was just use Ubuntu, man. It's just Ubuntu. It's just a prettier Ubuntu. All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> we'll have to do an episode where we have a, a talk about Linux Mint because I have a lot of opinion, opinions on that. Uh, anyways, so what I figured what we'd do, Martin, is we'd go back and forth. You know, I'll do one, you do one. Um, yeah, sounds good. And you can go first if you'd like. Oh, excellent. Um, well, as I'm new to Linux this year, everything that I have actually learned is new, essentially. Uh, so I just noted down a couple of things that uh, just pop out uh, to me. Uh, the first one uh, was basically making the switch to Linux. So I'm on Linux about 98% of the time. I just literally log into Windows, do what I've got to do, and come straight out. So, I mean, that, that's my first one. So what distro are you using now as your like main distro? Are you still on Linux Mint? Uh, no, no, I switched up. So I um, changed the desktop environment to KDE and uh, like that. So I thought I'd give KDE Plasma a go. And I've been on the KDE Plasma for about two months, I think, now. So are you using like Neo- KDE Neon or are you using a K- Kubuntu? Um, I couldn't tell you to be truthful. It, it's, is it based on Kubuntu? Slightly off. Not 100% to be fair. I think that Um, proves a lot of people's point that the distro just doesn't matter. (laughs) I know, exactly. It it just does such a good good job. I mean, I I can't remember now that you said that. You you threw me a curveball there. Uh, But, yeah, it just just works. And KDE, as you know, is beautiful. But Mm -hmm. you you can get lost in customizations. 
Yeah, <laughs> I did that many times. All right, so my first one is I've transitioned this year to um, using window managers only. I spent most of my year in i3. I think I think I prob probably some of this was partially in 2019 as well, but um, for the most part, I spent my entire year perfecting i3 for my use, getting all the key bindings the way I like them. You know, I switched themes many many times, but mostly the you know the key bindings and stuff stay the same. And I transitioned to using a, a key binding like a daemon so that I can uh, transition between window managers easy, easier. But lately I've been using DWM, which is uh, – DWM is kind of like the Arch Linux of, uh, of window managers because everybody who uses it looks down on everybody else who uses something different. So <laughs> um, it, it took me a long time to figure out because I know no uh, – C programming language at all, I, I, just none. Um, I took a little bit of it in like my first year of college, but I was just was not good at it. So um, it's it's been a journey the last month or so learning how to uh, configure this and you know config files and stuff to getting it getting it to work the way I want it to work. And now I don't I have a hard time switching back to i3, so I can see why people look down on <laughs> others because <laughs> it's so it's so good it's so fast it's awesome. Um, it's also it's also hard to set up. I mean, uh, obnoxiously hard to set up, and the 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 documentation that they provide is by far the worst documentation out of any window manager I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, it's so bad. I mean, it's like they purposely wrote it to um, be unhelpful. Like like it's just. It was not good. So you pretty much have to – you're pretty much on your own or watching YouTube videos in order how to do stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's probably the biggest one for me is what I've – you know, I, I'm, I've maybe spent an hour in a, a different desktop environment all year. Um, when I have to use a dis different desktop environment, I use KDE. Um, and then there was a brief period where I used some Windows because I had to. Um, but for the most part, I just stick right <laughs> where I'm at. So, Martin, your second one. Our second one is the community, um, whether it's uh, the online podcasts, YouTube, um, whether you're meeting small groups. Um, it, it's just a, the feeling of being in a community because, I mean, we're only a smallish pool compared to the rest of the computer market share. Um, and just to remind people that, it only takes a like or a comment on a video, a question answered, or even a review on Steam for a game which you liked or disliked, whichever. I mean, all this goes out to help the Linux community um, gain a bit more traction and uh, moving it that little bit forward. Or you could be like me and make crappy YouTube videos. <laughs> Or like me and be a, a crappy sex co-host. <laughs> hey, no, you're awesome, man. You, you, you br hey, you want to know what? When I was doing this by myself, I felt so stupid. You know, because it's, so, it's really dumb to talk into a mic and not actually be talking to another person. So you've livened up the podcast quite a lot. Have I kept, um, kept you sane? Yes. And in this it, mad world. It's a... Uh, Talking to yourself is not fun. <laughs> it makes you question your uh, mental acuity. Um, anyway, so my second one know. is less um, – so I'm a big Firefox user. I like Firefox quite a lot. Um, but I don't always use Firefox. But now that I've found out that you can actually go through and basically create your own look and feel for it using CSS – I spent quite a lot of the year tweaking my Firefox setup uh, so that I have it all in like one line and it's you know just really cool looking. Um, in the community surrounding, I mean, you were talking about community. Um, like there's a whole subreddit for this kind of stuff, and you can just go through and you can get help and and share your share what you've done so far. It's really cool. Um, and, but it's another one of those time sinking things because like like you were talking about with KDE, you can kind of get Go into a rabbit hole of customization. Um, yeah. It, everything. It seems like everything I discover on Linux that I really like to do has that ra same rabbit hole, and it's like one rabbit hole right after another. So, you know, I spend hours and hours theming my window manager so that it's you know a different color scheme or you know different icons or whatever. And then I do the same thing with my user Chrome.css for Firefox, and then 
you know, I do the same thing for, you know, my terminal emulator and <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a surprising thing that I ever get anything done. Because I'm always just <laughs> constantly tweaking things. Because I always have to. Oh, okay. I found a new tool. I got to learn how to do it, and then I can, uh, you know, I get into like, I, like I got. Um, we were talking a few weeks ago. I finally got uh, MPD and NCMPP and peeps, some terrible name for uh, a music thing, you know, to, to play music in the terminal. Um, oh yeah, I, yeah. I spent hours tweaking and theming that. <laughs> I mean, at least I got to listen to music <laughs> while I was doing it. So. <laughs> Uh, that, it's just everything's a, 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 to, a time. Like, I just put so much time in all this stuff. Anyways, uh, your third one. Well, my third one is the amount of free choice available, um, whether it's software, distros, desktop managers, terminals. I mean, the, the, just the amount of actual choice. I mean, when I stuck on Windows, I, I literally kept to my same couple of programs but you can always find it either a fork or something similar to a, a windows if you're used to that but it, it, it's just absolute choice i mean it, it, it's staggering and uh, i mean people put all the time in it f- for nothing just for the satisfaction of um improving of the people's um workflow so i mean yeah i think definitely the, the free choice available is um, my third choice all right, so my third one is that I discovered Zim, and um, it's really weird that I've put this on the list because I'm actually thinking about switching away from Zim because, of course, I, <laughs> I, I, I switch away from things all the time. I found, like I found something new and shiny. My attention span has been not good for the last 20 years. Anyways, um, it completely transformed the way I take notes when I was using it because um, I could go through and create like my own little wiki create links and embedded links and embedded pictures and files and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's really helped me write outlines for, you know, the fiction that I write or plan videos and stuff. But I haven't, I haven't been, I've noticed the last like week and a half that I haven't been using it nearly as much because I've mo- moved most of my scripting for videos and stuff to uh, Notion, which is not an open source application, which, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, and I'm, you know me in my, my terminal application, so I'm thinking about moving to, Z, to VimWiki, which is, Zim is basically a GUI version of VimWiki. Um, but I liked the visual way Zim did Markdown. That's the reason why I didn't choose Z, VimWiki to begin with, but I'm thinking because I'm such a nerd that I'm going to have to go <laughs> try VimWiki again. Um We'll see how that goes because I mean all my notes and stuff are in Zim and I I don't know if I want to try transfer them all over but we'll see um that'll be a project for next year all right I was gonna say, is that one. an easier oh, sorry is that an easy task transfer is you're able to drop your well, or do you have to rewrite them all out again or no I should be able to just transfer them because the Zim just saves them as text files. You know, so the, the when you when you nest something like a, a child link in your wiki, it saves it. Your, that parent link becomes a folder, and everything else just goes in that folder. Folder, right? All right. Um, yeah. So you can just I should just be able to transform over. The problem is VimWiki sh- saves everything as .md files, which is Markdown, right? So yeah. Um, but I don't know why I couldn't just go through and rename every give just change the extension on all the zim files to md because it because yeah yeah um, zim uses markdown it is just a really weird um version of markdown so it, sh- it should work i don't know i haven't actually tried it yet so we'll i guess we'll find out oh, excellent Your next right one. sorry my fourth one uh virtual box um i mean i, I know it's available on other systems uh, but I've never had any reason to use it until now. Um, all I can say is it's brilliant. Uh, just brilliant for trying out distros. Um, slight learning curve to get onto it. I think you've done a video on it also, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Um, but once you've got used to it uh, and knowing how it works and things like that, it, it, it's just, just great. Just save burning USBs or DVDs or n- nuking a, laptop to stick a new um distro on so yeah fourth one's virtual box just 
mainly for tatting about, really, which is what we all like to do. It's really hey. saved me from for, from distro hopping quite a lot because, you know, when I want to try a new distro, I just put it in a virtual machine. Yeah. Um, it, it it's not <laughs> it's way easier than Vert Manager. So I've been trying to find out how to figure out how to do um Vert Manager because you know a lot of the YouTubers use it, and you know because I'm hmm. like following the crowd. But it's just I have not been able to get Vert Manager to work. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. Um. That that be another project for me, um, because of course I got to do all what all the cool kids are doing. Um, oh well, yeah. Why not? So <laughs> my first three, I focused on positive things that you know I've you know discovered or been doing over the years. So the next two are less positive things. Although this this next one turned out well. So if you followed the last couple episodes, you'll know that I had to get out of my Linux partition and boot into Windows in order to do the podcast because. Uh, I bought a new audio, um, I, I, I bought a Focusrite or Focus Scarlet Solo audio interface and, um, so I could use my Heil, my Heil PR40, oops, bump, bump the thing, um, and I wanted to use them, but the problem is that Skype, for whatever reason, would not recognize the Scarlet Solo as an input device, it would recognize it as an output device. Uh, so I spent had to be three weeks. I mean, Martin, you know this. I every time I had to log into Windows, I bitched about it for uh, <laughs> pretty much the first half of the podcast, and then most of the second half of the podcast. It was it was not a good time. Uh, but this last week, uh, after learning everything I could learn about Jack D and Jack's QJack CTL and all this stuff, I mean, I I got into a real really big rabbit hole of Linux audio things that I. I'd never heard of before, and I'm still not even close to a um, uh, like an expert or anything. But <laughs> it, it turns out that if you use PAVU control, which is just basically the front end for Pulse Audio, it's which it's basically what you see if you go into KDE and go into the audio settings. This is basically PAVU control. Um, it's the same thing. If I you know, I went into the advanced settings and changed the the micro the scarlet solo from uh from one it went from uh, i can't remember it, it from one setting to another and all of a sudden it worked <laughs> it was like one setting in that one <laughs> app and that was the problem and now all of a sudden it works so i can i i have my microphone going so that it's doing you know in skype i have my bluetooth headphones so the audio is coming through there and i have audacity going it's it's working perfectly um, hopefully. <laughs> so, but, I mean, it's just, it's been, it, this, when I first started using Linux, uh, you know, I had, I mean, I think everybody experiences where there's just those complicated things that you, you know, you see everybody else do, um, but you can't really quite figure it out yourself. And you spend weeks and weeks and weeks trying to learn this one thing that probably should be easier than it, you know, it seems to be. Um, and, and Every, I mean, everybody has that when they first start, but this is the first one I've had in quite a while where I just ran up to that wall where I just could not figure it out, um, but I finally did. So that's my fourth one. Brilliant. Right, five, security. So no personal data is going to be sent to the mothership, and I'm in control, which is exactly how it should be and exactly how I like it. Yeah. Um, I was reading something. I can't quite remember. There's, they were talking about because Microsoft brought their Windows Defender this last year to Linux, and people yeah. were kind of arguing about whether or not Linux needs a virus, you know, protection. Um, is that something you'd ever run on your your Linux? Uh, to to be fair, um, I don't download any illicit software or things like that um, and I'm always careful of what web pages I do click on but yeah I mean I, I'm Windows always has a firewall running and I mean how much memory and processing Linux use I should use a firewall I was using it in Mint because it's got one set up nice and handily I don't think there's uh, one in uh, KG Neon um at the moment, it, it, 
it's just being bothered for me to download one. I mean, I, I'm quite a light user. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a benefit to anyone, whether you, you think you, Linux is not s- safe from attacks, malicious attacks, malicious codes, viruses, things like that. So I, I, I agree. Yeah. You, you should really use one. Oh, I don't. If I were going to use one, though, well, I don't. don't know that, uh, uh, if I were going to, I wouldn't use one from Microsoft. <laughs> you know, it just seems. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, to be I'd fair, want, um, I want an sorry. open source one. Yeah, I could understand what you're saying, but I mean, Microsoft have got years and years under them with Defender, and Defender is good. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. I mean, I used to have. A third party, a vast and all, all, all different ones. Oh, it was quite I, heavy yeah. resource. I, I would install Microsoft Defender way before I installed McAfee. <laughs> and M- McAfee, yeah. And, and they're just nightmare, just pop ups and pop ups and things like this. So, I mean, I, I must admit, it, um, I, I probably would use uh, Defender. Mm. All right, well. You let me know if you end up doing that because I'd want you to know your, what your experience was because you can be the guinea pig this time. All right, so my last one. All right. <laughs> my last one is um, I'm on the hunt. So this is kind of more like a thing I'm going to be doing for the year ahead, I guess. Um, but uh, it's been something I've been looking for for a while. I've been looking for a replacement for LibreOffice because LibreOffice is kind of terrible. Um, and all the other ones I've found have basically been clones of Microsoft Word, and I don't – I don't. I just don't care for that. So I'm trying to find a Office slash Word processor replacement um, that I can use. Um, knowing me, I'll probably try to find something that's in the terminal, just because you know. Hello, nerd. <laughs> um, I I know there is like a something called Word Grinder, but I want to. I want something that will allow me to take all my documents that I have right now, which are all saved in ODT, to. Um, be able so I can you know cross compatibility. I haven't found anything on great. I know Word Grinder will do the open document format, but the f- formatting is just all kind of wonky. And they have their own proprietary, I mean, whatever that they want you to try to transfer it to. And I'm not I'm not really into. I, I want to have the option of going back to uh, LibreOffice if I have to. So. Uh, that's something I'm going to be look, on the lookout for for this next year and continuing on until I find something different. But so far, I can't really pinpoint the reason why I don't like LibreOffice. It's just one of, one of those things that's kind of clunky. It just feels slow to me. I don't know. Maybe it's because everything else I use is in the terminal and it's so fast. Um, anyways, <laughs> that's me. A- as you can tell... Uh, I like the I like the terminal, and I'll mention that over and over again. So um, <laughs> let's move into our apps of the week. So these are the last apps of the week of the year. So uh, Martin, you can go first. Right, my app of the week is Walk, and that's W A L C. Um, it's a snap or an app image. Um, well, what it is, it's basically WhatsApp desktop client for your Linux system. It just makes things easier. I mean, if you're sending files or pictures or you're having long conversations, it's just easy to take it from your small screen and just slap it on the desktop. Uh, so this is way better than what I've been using. I've been using something called What's Desk. Um, yes, I was using previously um, the RAM box I'd said before. Um, but I was having a couple of problems with it last week. I think that was a, what affected my audio because I had Skype running in it and WhatsApp. Mm. So I've had to look around and, and came up with this. But it, it's brilliant if you're sending pictures or anything like that. Nice and easy. Uh, all you got to do is hold your camera up to it. Yeah, so you go to WhatsApp, your options. I think it's web, something web. And then you just scan the QR code on your desktop and all your conversations come up on your um, PC. And obviously, you can save the files onto your, mm-hmm. yep. your uh, PC. What What's Desk is similar, but it's wonky. Like you can tell, it's like in a container. It's like has these what, large black borders or whatever. It probably would be different if I, you know, yeah, that does look better if I you know, change the size, you know, so it's not full screen. 
but it doesn't like fill up the whole screen when it's full screen. So I might look into this. The problem is, is it's, it's a Snap, and I don't have Snap D installed, so I'd have to install Snap D. Um, yeah. There is an app image available I'm using. Oh, is I there? Oh, cool. with the Snap. Yeah. I mean, I um, so you could give that a try. So it's not in the. A yeah, it seems. Oops, sorry. Like it's not in the AUR, which is really. I mean, it just hurts my heart to see an app that looks this good not to be in the AUR. I mean, it has to be useless if it's not in the AUR, right? I'm just... No. <laughs> All right, I'll definitely give it... I'm going to leave that tab open. So uh, now that I've I've uh, established myself as an, an arch snob, um, let's continue on uh, to something... Um, Luke Smith is a, a, a YouTuber, and he... Uh, he has different tools available. Most of his, some of his videos are like really, really weird, um, but his Linux stuff is usually pretty good. And his he has a tool called Mutt Wizard. So, uh, in my quest of finding uh, terminal applications to replace everything I do, uh, I wanted to start using NeoMutt, and that's it's a it's an email application that runs in the terminal. And the problem is if you set it up on your by yourself, you have to deal with finding the IMAP server of Gmail or whatever email server you use and make sure you're on the right ports and all this nonsense. If you use Mutt Wizard, which is I've linked in the show notes, uh, you just run a command, enter your username and password, and it sets it all up for you. Um, it's it's simply just works. It's kind of awesome. Uh, it's not for everybody because you really... So many emails now come through in HTML... Um, and this is in a terminal, so you can't view HTML. So you'll you have to kind of put up with that kind of stuff. I still have Evolution installed, so when I need a view of uh, email, and I don't feel like going to Gmail.com because I still use Gmail. One of these days, I'm gonna f switch to like Proton Mail or something. But Proton, if you want, you know, like the actual features, you have to pay for it. And I'm, uh, I'm not quite to the point where I want to pay for my email yet. Um, yeah, what well, you mean? Yeah, you know, I was just I don't use it that often. I don't want to, I don't, I don't I don't know if I want to spend the money. Um, I'm a cheap you know sob. Anyways, so <sighs> that was a good episode. Um, Martin, Excellent. that was our last episode of the year. So we'll be back in January with season five. Um, and we sh we should have some really good topics coming up. We'll make sure we do some controversial stuff, and we're gonna I I think we're gonna try to do some like. Uh, distro reviews or something. We'll we'll each install a, a, the distro in our like a virtual machine. We'll use it for a little while and we'll we'll talk about it. it should be fun. Um, anyways, that'll be coming yeah, up in January. Yeah, we're we'll coming back in yeah. January. Um, I hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday season or whatever holiday you thing. And I think everybody can just be so grateful that 2020 is finally hanging over. Right. <laughs> Too All right. right too right so that is it for us this time we'll see you in 2021 excellent have a great holiday period guys